Well, there we go. So welcome to Power Hour. We're live from Miami Beach. I'm actually here now. I, I will do the, uh, we have an August class and I'll be doing a live show from Palo Alto there. <clears throat> that's the current plans. I think that's uh, the, the week of the 12th of August in that general time frame. So anyway, let me bring up new share here and welcome you to, if you've not been here before, uh, hello. So we uh, start our show about three minutes past the hour. Can we have let people in the room about five minutes until so we can catch up on things and just to hear what's going on in general. Uh, let's see, and um, that's kind of what we do. We'll leave the room open for about 15 minutes to a half hour after the show and I unmute you. So if you have a question or if you wanna say something, then you'll be able to. So if you hang around for the after party, <laughs> I guess if we call it that, uh, it'll be uh, right after, right after. So, um, okay, so there's that. So let's talk about what today is, today's topic is. And uh, let me see who's here. Uh, just so I can scroll down through the list real quick. I, I know uh, Pena's are here. And then uh, Brad Berger, previous alumni, is there. Bruce, Bruce here a lot. Bruce is good. Uh, Felix, I know Felix. Gary Weaver, oh, Gary, right, Gary Weaver's here. And uh, <clears throat> who else do I person? Lee Perrin, I know, um, he's an anesthesiologist, I know him. I know him by, or, uh, by si not by sight, I've never met you, but I will one day. Uh, Nicholas. And I have, uh, oh yes, Ro, Ro Salazar. Ro is uh, offered, I think, <clears throat> if I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll make him, he'll do it. <laughs> so he's a safe member, but he said he wanted to do a power hour presentation on sport pilot in particular. I don't know if you know this, but in sport pilot, if, once you have a sport pilot certificate, it's not issued with a rating on it. Your certificate says sport pilot. Everything's by endorsement. <clears throat> so if you're endorsed to fly a single engine airplane, it'll be by an endorsement. So once you take a test with a, with a DP or inspector, you want to add an additional category class rating, like say powered parachute, or maybe you have powered parachute and come an airplane. All you have to do is you find two CFIs. You find one who can do the training and the other who can do the proficiency check for you. Then that CFI can go into IACRA and present and get out that, that certificate. The FAA knows then you have it. And it's not done by a DP, it's done by another CFI. And so there are some trouble with the FAA is not very happy with the way that's being conducted lately. So he's got something he wants to say about that. So I'll connect with him. And so we can bring that, that presentation to you if he's still willing to do it. And I'm pretty sure I'll see him in Oshkosh anyway. So it'll probably be after that. Anyway, that's just something to say. And looks like, go oh, Soledad's here. <clears throat> so, you know, Soledad, if uh, all of you must know by now, <clears throat> Soledad is, uh, works in the Dominican Republic. She's a graduate too of our, our school. And uh, she stands out with a big solar blanket every time there's a tropical storm and deflects it away from Miami. See, there hadn't been any this year. We haven't we had just that one, there wasn't anything big. That's because she's there, right? When she's here, they have all kinds of trouble. So nothing to say, she's doing a really good job with that. So there's that. Okay, so uh, let's get into the content here. Let's talk about what we're gonna talk about. So I'll just overview this thing. So what my the idea is, is to give you what maneuvers a CFI has to teach on the check ride. And we'll do a tour of the PTS must do's, what has to be done. And this is also useful for those of you who aren't really gonna be a CFI, just gonna take a test someday because the organization of the PTS or the ACS is similar. And uh, the way in which you approach it is the same, pretty much the same. The way you're going you're gonna to find out what needs to be tested or not is going to be the same. <clears throat> so I've got all that stuff kind of loaded up and we can look into that. And then, uh, so that's going to be, I'm going to explain how this PTS is organized. And we'll compare it a little bit to the ACS, which is, I have some history on that, but uh, I'll, I'll tell you why I think it's better. And then uh, we'll look at some of these things. I have a document that I forgot that I wrote. Um, uh, which is uh, called uh, this thing. It's called the C, uh, CFI PTS Quick Study Guide. Uh, it's got this cover on it. So, uh, and what it does is it goes through what are the most likely areas in the PTS that will be covered on a CFI practical test and uh, what should I study in what order, first, second, third. It's like five pages long. So it's a really good little book I wrote here. It's, people tend to like it. It may not be your test, but it's got a lot of good advice no matter what's in here. So there's that. And I guess I wrote it when I was on a flight over Texas in American. This is what I said. So I always like to say where I am. I don't know. <clears throat> so anyway, we'll cover this a little bit uh, so you can, you can get the idea of it. All right. So let's, let me go back to the. Uh, this thing. All right. So I want to bring up the PTS now and just talk about the CFI test is a strange animal because uh, I used to do those initial CFI tests. And I did quite a few of them. And, uh, it, you know, they take a long time. Uh, it's not by, uh, it's not a rite of passage, I wouldn't say, although it could be, right, that it's a really long test, but 
and the fail rate was at that time was pretty miserable, was pretty high. I think my, I never got past the 30 or 40% pass rate on them, which is awful, right? <clears throat> it was one of those tests that was really long. You really, and then when the, the outcome was probably not going to be very good. One of those tests you kind of don't want to do a lot of, but anyway, there did quite a few of them. And it's very variable because it's one of the few tests that the examiner has, has a lot of freedom in what it can be picked. Right. There are lots. So, for example, in your private pilot test, there was only two places in that whole book. That there was a choice that the examiner uh, could make. They other, so it was in the system, the operation of the systems. They had to pick at least three or five. I guess the numbers either is three or five of the 13 that are there or 10. And then the other thing is on the ground reference maneuvers, you only needed to select one of them. So not all three. So uh, and that's it. The rest of the test had to be <clears throat> completed. Each each area of operation had to be completed. <clears throat> and test it. And the CFI is, is not is is a little different because in the ground, especially in the in the uh, ground well, bound and flight portion, there are notes all over this PTS that say the examiner shall select task like M and at least one other task or at least two other tasks or no, whatever it would say. So this means that this test can be highly variable, which means that one examiner may have a particular way of doing it, which may look kind of nothing like the way the other examiner tests it, which kind of makes it problematic. And my whole contention for as long as I can remember has been, we have a group within FAA called AFS 640. So 600, AFS 600, it's the flight standards group in Oklahoma City. Uh, that's certification of airmen, right? That's certification. Anything to do with certification goes through AFS 600. And then a sum of that 640 is called the examiner standardization, uh, which they don't do any of. <clears throat> so they, they, uh, they come out and to your FISDO and to your area for one day, or maybe they do it all via Zoom <clears throat> now, and they try to standardize on, on for two days every two years, but that's it. But it, when there, there's no real like, there's no real standardization going on. So what, what's okay with one FISDO is not, not okay with another one. And, and what one examiner does, the other one doesn't do. It seemed to me that, that it could be a lot better than that. And this uh, examiner reformation uh, panel that has that, that has been by industry that had finally has met and come to conclusions. FA has taken up some of those things pretty, uh, that they've recommended pretty seriously. Part of that is the standardization of testing. Because I, you know, I, I, I think it's like, it's kind of weird, right? So they think about this. I could, if I had a group of 20 examiners, I picked 20 as a good number. And, uh, and you passed your first test um, with one examiner and you took a test from the other 19 examiners, but I got, done with the 19, you wouldn't have passed, right? There'll, there'll be someone that it didn't, that has had a pet peeve on a checklist or something that you wouldn't have got passed, right? It's just like that. So it shouldn't be like that. And it should be, uh, the standard should be a less a subjective and a lot more uh, uh, objective, right? So, so, but that's, we can talk about that as we go. But let me show you what you're gonna face on this test. And uh, uh, the best thing I could tell you to do is to do as much intelligence on the person who's gonna do your test and then, structure study and structure from that but if we don't know and we just want to see how things are organized let's do that so the first thing i want to show you is that uh, how the pts is organized i'm going to run down these and i'll show you in the actual document so you'll be able to see it but i think it's it's important to and if you didn't know this before you'll be better especially a flight instructor you'll be better off knowing it <clears throat> so the first thing we have is an area of operation in an area of operation of big groups, giant group of related areas that are available to test. So if I go to the flight instructor uh, uh, PTS, which I need to move the zoom control out of the way for a second. Uh, this is the PTS for flight instructor. And if I, I have to go pretty far down in the document to get to where anything is, but uh, okay. I guess I went a little too far, but here you go. Let me bring it up here. All right, good enough, we're close now. Uh, so uh, let's, pick the, let's pick this next task that's coming up, area of operation. So it's like, okay. So this is called an area of operation, technical subject areas, area of operation two. So if you fail this test, it's gonna, and you fail it on one of these topics, it's gonna say AO, area of operation two, task, whatever the next thing is. So a task is a subset of these. So here's task, aeromedical factors. Right, so now we know we have area of operation one, area of operation two, three, four, so until it's all done. And then we have tasks that are within each area of operation. So this has a lot of tasks. So technical subject areas, you can see the first task is zero medical factors. Then the runway incursion avoidance, right? And then it goes and goes and goes and goes and we'll come to the end here. 
<clears throat> we're already past J, K, L, M, N. Uh, then we're getting towards the end. Okay, so that, that's then we run into the next area of operation, which is area of operation three. So there's quite a few tasks in there. So those, those are called tasks here. That. All right, then from that, below the task, we have elements. So let's grab that thing. Elements. Great. So let's pick the air medical factors. That seems it's the first one that shows up anyway. <clears throat> so these are the, there's an objective here, then there are elements. So this is the things that are going to be tested, each, each little bullet, how to obtain an appropriate medical certificate. So I would have to craft up a question or a scenario that covers all that, right? All these things have to be covered. So uh, then you look at these, these are things that have to be done. So these are the elements. So uh, one tip of the day that I can give you while we're here is uh, if you have a PTS, well, you'll have one for the test, take two. One is a clean one that's not been touched before and take one and put uh, some notes in it. And what I mean by notes is over here next to this, how to obtain a medical certificate, put the regulation that addresses that there. Like FAR 61.23 is, is what reg regulation that is. And this is called uh, for a, a soda, a state of demonstrated ability. And then these are the, and you can, and where it appears in the handbook. So therefore, you know, when you get stuck, you got that deer in the headlight look and you can't figure out what some, you know, what, what I should be looking at. Like, what, what is this? You, you can go to the reference, right? Or, or you'll have it pretty quickly. That's the reason you have to bring two is because if you don't know the DP would be okay with that, uh, then you, you could try it. And if it doesn't work, you have to bring out the, the one that doesn't have the references in it. But I think mostly you can know that if that's another good reason to go to a place like ours or someone else's that does CFIs and uses specific DPEs because we know what's acceptable and not for each one of them. So you don't have to take the guesswork out of it. It really condenses the study time when you, like if you know that you don't have to memorize things for the fundamentals of instructing, if you knew that, if you wouldn't have to like memorize these, you know, 40 different mnemonics that we have for it. Uh, if you know that this examiner doesn't ever test it that way, then you save an enormous amount of time. You save a lot of time and a lot of aggravation. But if you know you have to do it, well then, you know, whether you do, right? You used to know that. So there's that. So uh, from the elements, then the other thing we have are references that's here. So these are the references and these are what uh, can be tested where the information is located. So, uh, and this is an area where I wanna give you another tip of the day, right? Two really good ones here. So we still have examiners who like to ask things that aren't in these references um, and uh, tend to give students a notice of approval because they don't, uh, they don't like that because they don't know the student or the applicant for flat starter didn't know it. <clears throat> so, you know, it, it sort of, it really makes me crazy when a student uh, fails a test and it's on something that's not in the, not, not, not anywhere in the standard. I'll give you an example. We have a particular DP uh, who uh, used to ask like how the inner workings of a magneto works, right? I mean, why? <laughs> you know, so it's not in the references. It's not in the AIM. It's not in the, uh, the POH for the airplane. It's not in the airplane flying handbook, the pilot's handbook of aeronautical knowledge. It only appears in AMT manuals for aviation maintenance technicians, right? That's it. And so then when a notice of approval came once, it became really problematic for me because I said, you can't test outside the standard. You can't do that. I mean, you know, you, you, and he says, don't you think a flight instructor should know more than a student? I said, yeah. I said, with that same logic, a DPE should know more than a flight instructor. So let me give you a test now on electromagnetism because that's my, my background has been electromagnetism and you won't pass it right because there's no standard but if i say here's what you need to know here's what only I, that's going to be on that could be on the test because this is what you're supposed to be responsible to know then i wouldn't be asking that question i would ask something i would I can't ask it right so there has to be a standard so the tip of the day is if you feel that this is happening to you and you're and now if you're not going to get a notice of disapproval because of it then don't worry about it because that's just some examiners are like that. They need to show the world that they know more than, than you or, the, they, the, or they have already categorized the most important things in the world in flying and they're giving you as a gift this thing, right? To say, this is what you really should know or when, why. So that's fine, it's okay. But uh, if this happens, then the, the examiner, you need to give them a chance to unring the bell because if they give a notice of disapproval to you and, you're, uh, and they were truly testing outside the standard, it's really problematic for, uh, for them because once they go into IACRA and, choose the fail button, you know, and what it's for, and you challenge it, and you say it was tested outside the standard. Now, the uh, DP can't go, uh, can't go unring the bell. The FISDO has to do that, or Oak City has to do that. And you can guarantee that they're going to ask, why are we doing this, right? And you're going to say, well, 
he was testing outside. I said, tested outside the standard. And we're at the set up remedial training. It's going to be kind of a, a show, right? So let's not go down that route. So what you do when this happens is say, okay, I get it. I didn't, under, I don't know what that is. And the guy says, okay, well, girl says, you know, we're going to get a notice of approval for that. Okay. And then you say, but uh, let me just see something. So, because here's the references for this thing. And I think, I don't know where it's at. You know, I don't, this inner working is a magneto. I really don't know where that's at, these references. And I, this is what I'm supposed to have. And I don't really know where it's at. Could you show me where that is? So that way, you know, I can, uh, I can re-educate myself on this. And when they can't find it, they'll say something like, uh, well, that was in there a long time ago, or, or it must have, I haven't read this in a while. And give them a chance to unring the bell there and say, I guess it's not the standard, right? Most DPs will recognize <clears throat> uh, when they're testing out the standard, if you show them the reference and it's not there, it may piss one of them up, but you're already going to fail. Who cares, right? So it doesn't, you know, doesn't matter, right? You just want to make sure that your references, these are the things you hold accountable for and nothing else outside of these, okay? That's what you need to know. All right, let's go back to the outline quickly. And then we can dig a little deeper here. So let me move this control over to here so I can see you. All right, then there are completion standards. And this is the degree to which you must perform or to know about a task and their common errors. And finally, the notes, which become really important here in a second. So let's look at those. So um, down here at the bottom, uh, we would have to look a little far. Let's, well, let's look at the notes first, because the notes are kind of where the, a lot of the meat of the matter is here. So it says to the examiner, examiners must select test B, M, and at least one other task. Now, you know B and M are going to be selected. You just don't know what the other is going to be. So you look at B, that's going to be runway incursion avoidance right here. So this will be tested, right? So, and you got to read the notes. Every, every place is a note. Be sure you read it. And then uh, M is uh, certificates uh, for like endorsements. So if I go to that's M down here. M, 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 L, M. Logbook entries and certificate endorsements. So that has to be tested. Those two, and this is one other, right? So, uh, and while we're here, we can give you, I think Edgar uh, Mora had at one point had suggested that we talk about how this sort of could be tested and you know, if that, what makes sense. And so, yeah, so how it can be tested is, this is, I think is brilliant by the way. Uh, there, we have a, a couple DPs, not the one we typically use the most, but a few who, uh, who run the, probably the best CFI oral test I can think of, right? It's a real practical test and it's, a, it's one big scenario. So the examiner gives a cross-country flight from, um, uh, where is it from, from uh, Al Al Albuquerque to Las Cruces, New Mexico. It's the same one each time. And he says, go ahead and share it with anybody you want. You know, have everybody's input on it. Go get your flight instructor's opinion on it. You know, make the plan. He says, and, and that's going to be our basis for the test. And so everything comes off of this. So you can imagine airspace can be tested off of that cross-country flight planning, your ability to teach cross-country flight planning, that's your lesson, right? That can be done along with a maneuvers lesson. Endorsements required for student pilots to do that kind of a trip can come off of there. Solo requirements, everything can come off. Many, many, many things can come off of that. <clears throat> and I think that's a grand uh, exam because first, it doesn't take that long. This test for this examiner takes about four and a half hours, but gets it all done because it's with the scenario is so good that it just flushes all this stuff out if you either know it or you don't know it. Right. And so it's, so I think it's a really good method. And then uh, for the fundamentals of instructing, uh, there's another girl we use, uh, Michelle, uh, and she tests all by scenario. Uh, so what will happen is during the FOI, she will say, prepare a lesson. Let me see you create a lesson plan on like the, the taxiway structure here operating Oak Block Airport, something simple or something like a piece of an avionics that's going to be in your airplane. Like what are the limitations on the autopilot? Give me a, a lesson on that. So she tests out the FOI by actually having you do something. And so she can tick off boxes. Like uh, she can say, okay, I, I chose this area of operation with fundamentals of instruction called planning instructional activity. Cause I had to pick this one, this one, and I chose this one. And I, how did I test it? I had them generate a lesson plan because that ticks off all the, the elements that are within this, this operation. And then what happens at the very end of the test, <clears throat> the oral, if there's still things that she couldn't have ticked off then she'll test those individually. And I think that's fine. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. The one guy we use the most, he does it line by line on the FOI, line by line, tick, 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 tick. So that means you have to memorize a lot of things. And I, I think it's the worst way to do it because I also have told him, you know, you don't, you know, I don't have any opinions on avi aviation or testing. Oh God. Anyway, but I would say, you know, I said, you know, if you give the same test to a 10th grade high school educator, they're not going to pass it. 
they wouldn't pass this test, right? Be oh yeah, yet they're, they're an exceptional instructor, exceptional teacher, exceptional, exceptional professor. And because they know this, but they, they don't know the nuts and bolts of it anymore. But there's a lot of things you can do that you don't know the nuts and bolts for anymore. Like if you study calculus, you know that, there, that there's, uh, there's theory behind the calculus and there's the act matter of doing. So if I said, go teach a calculus class, you'd be like, oh, right, I got to go limits and I put all the underpinning of all this stuff, right? But you, you still do it. So that's what I say about this is there's a lot of underpinning here that once you sort of embedded it into the way you roll or the way you do things, then, then you are, you're using this information, just not necessarily knowing the exact title or minutia what it's called, right? You, you know you have to do it. So there's like the laws of learning, for example, Thorndike's laws of learning, the example of that. You may not remember all six of them. He had three, by the way, we added for, for fun, we added three more right? later, they're hundred years old. <clears throat> so anyway, we've got that. And then you can say, well, if I see a list, I can show you on my lesson plan, how I really you know, rang the bell for each one of these, even if I couldn't tell you what the list was straight off my head. So there's a difference between knowing and sort of roading it all out. So that, that's that. So the biggest single thing you can do there, by the way, is, is to call up your DPE or uh, meet with them or, or have your instructor do it if, you, if he doesn't like hearing from you or she doesn't like hearing from you. And just simply ask, how is the FOI tested? You don't, it's, you're not asking what's on the test. You're asking, how is it tested? Because this will really help uh, your study around the fundamentals of instructing because that, that's that area of operation up here in the beginning which I'll show you. So when you look, if when you're a first time instructor, if you, once you become a flight instructor, you're not subject to this, this again, or if you have to renew uh, or uh, reinstate, you won't have to. So this is the fundamentals of instructing. It says examiner shall select task E and one other task. Wow, there's a lot of tasks in here though. Uh, so uh, anyway, task E is down here. E, D, e is called uh, responsibilities and, and professionalism here. <clears throat> there's the reference that's the aviation instructor's handbook it's now revision b by the way there if you're looking for that uh and then one other task so it depends on the other task so but if, if it's going to be a memorization exercise then you know if that's how it's tested then that you're in you're at least you know that right and if it's by scenario well then that's probably better but you you know kind of how to approach it you know maybe i have to memorize a bunch of things you could just reference things that'd be okay so there's that. Okay, so that's the general, the idea of the, the PTS. On the flight side, if we move up here a little bit, you notice under the takeoffs and landings, if I go to that section, it's here. Not yet, landings. And by the way, we're the only country I know of that, uh, that does these really odd commercial maneuvers that have no real basis for anything practical outside of getting you, uh, <clears throat> A better pilot, I suppose, but <clears throat> no other country has chandelles, lazy eights, eights, none of this, nothing. But here's an important one. Uh, so it's just a straightforward, like a flight skills test. It's like go somewhere, navigate, you know, so you do navigate a real navigation exercise, like 30, 40 miles. Then next leg, go under the hood, you know, and, and position fix. And next thing is then do a diversion. And then there's some maneuvers like the stalls, keep turn, that kind of thing. The rest of the world does it that way. Uh, this is really important for you to know. This is area of operation uh, 11, slow flight stalls and spins. And it, uh, here's what's going to be tested. But uh, what's not known uh, widely is if you fail an area that's uh, related to this task. So this is this area of operation. If anything in here is picked and you don't pass it, on the retest, you have to bring an airplane and demonstrate spins to the exam. <clears throat> so it's the only uh, area of operation that if you fail it, you have to actually bring another airplane and demonstrate spins. So don't fail this area of operation. Make sure that you tighten all this stuff up really, really well, right? So there's that. Also notice in here that if you look down through here, any of these, you're gonna find out that there's no the completion standards. There's no plus minus 50 feet. There's no plus minus 100, 100 nothing, no, no heading. So you go, why is that? It's not in there. So I guess I can do anything I want, right? No, it's tied to the commercial ACS or private pilot PTS or ACS. So basically means that in this area of power on stalls, you would go to the commercial pilot ACS and the completion standards there are the completion standards here. Uh, they would, the tolerances like about 10 degrees heading change, uh, whatever the, the uh, no, no secondary stall, whatever we would say in there. That's, that's, what, that's where you're gonna find the completion standards. The same like for the ground reference maneuvers, uh, you can be tested on, uh, S turns across road, turns around a point, that kind of thing. Those completion standards are in the private pilot, uh, ACS, which we can look at here in a second. So, you know, just way of maneuvering through this, this document. 
Uh, so I was going to show you the landings because in the particular landings, there's uh, not all have to be selected. And we have one examiner who every single time it's going to, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be um, uh, power off 180. I don't know why, but every single time it's going to be the power of 180. Let's find it here. Uh, but actually, you only have to demonstrate two different takeoffs and landings in the uh, find it if in uh, two takeoffs and landings on the test. And one of our DPs doesn't do it at all. Doesn't do the power off 180 ever. So there you go. So if that's what you're huh, afraid of. Uh, oh, by the way, I'll tell you something very funny. Why well, I'm here? Those lazy eights. Oh God, more of those, right? So I were king, this would be a whole different, different test, right? Uh, so, okay, here's the landings then. So let's go to the top of the landings. I should use search. I know you're saying, why don't you just use search? Mm -hmm. I'm lazy. I always have been lazy. <laughs> so, it's well, the pilot, I'm lazy, right? Pilots are lazy. Uh, so examiner must select at least two takeoffs and landing tasks, right? So it could be a normal one and uh, could be a short field. That could be it. Most will do a little bit more than that, but that's the requirements, right? So it'd be nice to know on your part whether um, whether examiner tests the power of 180 because it's the hardest one to do, as you probably know, right? So, and if you don't know what it is, basically it's a gliding approach from a beam to the touchdown point with a throttle at idle, and you have to land on a particular spot you've set, now plus 200 feet minus zero, right? So that's what it is. And uh, anyway, that's uh, sometimes it's, it, depending on the wind, depending on circumstances, it can be a challenge to, to get to do that. So anyway, on a particular flight test I gave to a student, um, he was really funny, he's a Russian guy and he teaches, he's an instructor now. And it was for his commercial test and the power of 180 is what did him in. It was not even close. It was like 900 or a thousand feet too long, or maybe 2000 feet too long, really far. And uh, so anyway, he had to come back for the retest and uh, he did this really funny thing. So sometimes you just, you really would have to, I don't know if you're, if you're allowed to laugh, I suppose, but I did. And so he did too. When he came back around, he, we did the power of 180 and he touched down, I swear to God, but we all, it was not even an inch off of the mark. It was like, that was like, it, it was perfect, right? And then he, he, uh, he we needed to do a go around because we had to do it fast. I guess we had to do one other thing. And so when he hit that, he went, Coaching <laughs> this and then the go around happened after that. I guess that should be a safety of flight, but when the kaching came, that was really funny. So you have people do some fun. That kind of brightens your day when you see stuff like that on a test. Someone really successful and they know it. He also knew it when he wasn't successful too the other time. That was kind of funny. All right, so there's that. Uh, let's go back to this document. So I think it'd be worth now uh, describing a few things here for helping you. Okay, let's see. Let's look what we've done. We've we've done all this. So we also said the flight instructor PTS doesn't have metrics for how well the maneuver needs to be demonstrated. You find those in the commercial and the private airplane ACS. The tests are supposed to, according to the FAA, is supposed to be as much of a scenario as possible because scenario uh, tests out the knowledge at the correlation level, right? But uh, I don't know if I always see that. <clears throat> but uh, that's so the more scenario driven tests you can give to, to me, the better the outcome is because it's and the real, real world stuff, you know, the stuff you're going to be doing right out of the gate. One of the things we, we really like at our place is that we know that when you finish, I think all of our CFIs here are in the room, uh, when you finish uh, with us, you feel like you can teach someone how to fly. You don't, you don't have like, oh, I better shadow this one dude for a girl for like three months and see what's going on here because I really don't know. You won't feel like that. And that's, uh, that's really where we want you to be. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay, so Lee will be at Osh. Great. Okay. Oh, hey, Stephanie, I probably you'll be there. Oh, the Piat book. Good. Okay. Good. Yum. He says it's all good stuff in there, right? Okay. Uh, so let's move on. I'll, I'll look at the chats here in a second. Uh, it's likely on the on this test that you'll get a commercial maneuver to teach, unless you get the cross country. Well, even that you're likely to get. It's very common among examiners to give you a commercial maneuver to teach from the whiteboard or whatever you're going to use, right? Um, if you're getting a flight plan, expect most of the test to be using, explaining it, teaching it. Uh, the flight side of the check ride is really straightforward and it only takes about one and a half to two hours to complete. Uh, and it will be apparent to you if you're uh, teach, evaluate, or just demonstrate a maneuver from the briefing that the DP will give you before the flight. Because people always ask that too. Do I have to teach everything? <clears throat> it really depends on the DP and what they, what their, the areas of operation they've picked and the tasks they've picked uh, and uh, what's going to be tested because it may be, more of a teaching test, uh, or it may be a demonstration. Demonstration stalls will certainly be a demonstration, not teaching. So 
uh, you'll get a briefing on that. Um, all right, again, there, here's the big caution. If you get a notice of disapproval for any task in slow flat stalls or spins, you'll be required to demonstrate spins on the retest. So don't do that. There are typically three ways that uh, a flight test is conducted. Uh, and I'm gonna show you some things that can really help you in a, in a minute. This is our stuff, but I'll show you stuff. Hand, I ha kind of handpicked it for this, for this uh, power hour because you know I can, if you look at, go to our website, you go, oh, that looks like that could be interesting. Or I wonder what that is. But if, you, if I tell you what's, what I think would be interesting for you to have or use, then you'll be like, okay, that, now I understand what that is. So I'll show you that in a minute. Typically with three types of tests, line by line. This takes the longest. I mean, it's like, let's do line by line. Uh, so that can take a long time. Uh, one of our DPs takes eight hours. We finish eight hours. And sometimes the flight's got to go next day, which is not bad. It's super fair. Our pass rate with him is 93% on the first time. But he's very thorough. He was an ex-FA inspector and an uh, ex-Army uh, helicopter test pilot. So he knows. So he, but he's also very good. Uh, so anyway, but it just takes a long time. And some scenario, some, another could be some scenarios and some line by line. So Michelle, she will do mostly scenario. And then whatever doesn't fall out, it's going to be line, line by line on that section. And then the other, uh, which should be uh, mostly scenario, which I think is really good. It doesn't take that long now. So then the last thing is, how is this FOI tested? Or not last thing, there's more things in here. You get a copy of this, by the way, and it's also in the chat. You can go get it now if you want to. It varies greatly. You know, some are all scenarios. Some are asking you to prepare something, teach, evaluate it. The only real way to know for sure is just ask, how do you test the FOI? And, you know, and if they says, I can't tell you what's on the test, I don't really, you know, that's up to you. Whatever you guys want to do is fine. I just want to know how it's tested so I can more prepare in that in that way. Otherwise, if it's going to be a bunch of memorization, then I'll memorize things. If it's no memorization in all scenario, then I'll take a different approach to it. You know, but either either way, I'll be prepared. I just it just makes my when I have all this stuff to study, it, it helps me constrain and helps me decide what's the most important thing to do and how much of it I have to have to be able to just chook up. Like with our one DP who wants you to have memorized the um, the commercial and private aeronautical experience. No, no, that's what I, in my opinion, that's what they make the FAR for, so that when you can't really remember that, because you don't do that every single day, you can pick up the book and see, right? And the test for me, can you pick up the book and see as a, and know where it's at, as opposed to you have this on the top of your head. So it's kind of things like that, right? Uh, so we have this, so there's that. All right, so let, now let me go to this, this document, which I think you're gonna like. So this is our uh, PTS quick study guide. And I suppose, uh, I don't know, I don't know what we do with this. I, I forgot that we had it, <laughs> it was really funny. <clears throat> I think we offer it as a bonus or something sometimes for this thing, but it's kind of an interesting document. So I list down here the technical subject areas and pre-flight preparation areas that, that must be tested and very likely tasks to be tested. And in my opinion of surveying all these examiners that I know, including being, being one of them, what were the most likely things, to, what had to be tested and what was most likely to get? Then statistically, you can at least, if you don't know you're a DP, you can align yourself on the side of, well, this is mostly what it's been like, right? So runway incursion avoidance, I also give you the handbooks here, uh, these kind of things. Long book entries, significant endorsements are required. These are the uh, places you can get that information. I guess we can probably, uh, is that, it's not a, it's, this is a PDF. So I think we can drop it. We give this away. So I think we can, <clears throat> I think we can drop it into the chat if Nick wants to do that. I mean, it's it would be nice to have because it also, it's actually very good because it does point to our products and say, well, this would this be what I would use if I were you, basically at the end. <laughs> so that's kind of okay. Yeah, so I guess we'll try to drop that in, into, the, into the chat or we'll ship it as part of the, uh, the outline to you, a link to it. So we'll, we'll see how that goes in a second. But anyway, and then operation of systems, airiness requirements, national airspace system. These are the kind of in this order, like what I think, are the things you're most likely to get and where the resources are for it. So that's really kind of handy. And then here you have the fundamental instructing, what are what must be tested and very likely. So these are the musts and these are uh, least less likely to be tested. So if you're like running out of time, this would be that, this would be the kind of page I would go to. Well, actually, if you're, it's kind of a civilian way of thinking, a pilot way of thinking, recreational way of pilot. A military or, or commercial airline guy does never goes into a test unprepared. They like want to be topped off. But sometimes for our crowd, we'll be like, you know, I'm tired of studying this. Like I, I did, uh, one of my uh, students was uh, someone you know, so another person you know. And uh, I guess I can't say who it is now. But anyway, uh, his approach to it was very brilliant guy. 
just recently. He said, uh, you know, I, I, that test is tomorrow or two days, two days from now. It's in an air, he doesn't want to use this one airplane that I have. He doesn't know anything about it. So he wants me to take a, a 182, 172, whatever the airplane was that I haven't flown for like three years. And I'm like, you're going to do that? It says, he says, yeah, I'll just go. I says, you know, it's it, otherwise, he said, he can give me a test in two more weeks, but I got to study this stuff for two more weeks. So I said, if I'm going to, I'm not really, it's concerned if it's a pass fail, really. He says, I'll get it. He says, but you know, if, if it's, if I got to wait two weeks, I got to put all this stuff in my head for two more weeks. If this were a military guy or uh, airline could be the well, it's just going to have to be another two weeks. Then, you know, I'll just have to just put my nose in the grindstone and keep doing it. <clears throat> but that's what we've got with it. And so I think that's, that's okay. You know, but it's okay to, to take that, but this would be the sheet I would use if I, if I were in that, in that particular place. Let's see. Oh, the syllabus. Oh yeah. I'll, I'll send, I can send you the syllabus too. All right. So, uh, and then down here, there are more technical subject areas, less likely to be tested. So, as we carry on with these. So, and again, it's subject to the test I've seen, although most of the DPs, if it's a scenario driven test, uh, it's mostly gonna be from a cross country flight plan. So in that case, this document wouldn't be as useful to you because it's not, this is more for a line by line uh, as opposed to all scenario, right? This is, that, that's what this is built for. But I think it will give you some guidance and it also has the resources, right? So I think that's kind of cool. Let me show you some of these resources I'm talking about for fun. All right, we've done that. We have a probably one of our best books. It's and it was just recently redone. It's called the uh, this thing. It's called the Checkride Quick Study Guide. It's in our and it's all these things I'm going to show you. You can either get them individually or you can get them as something we call CFI Essentials. Which if you don't have that, that's a really cool thing. If you, those of you who are in our class, you know how really valuable it is. It's a it's a, a folder that it's folders four different folders. One is called airplane information. So there's POHs for uh, just a lot of different airplanes. And one is uh, syllabuses, which you were talking about. They're dropped in there. Then there's another one for all of our custom content like this. And then there's FA resources, handbooks, ACSs, legal interpretations, and ACs that I kind of rewrote the titles to so you can search by word as opposed to the AC number. <clears throat> so that that is really, and lesson plans, those are all really good uh, because uh, when you're Studying for a test, all you have everything you need, or you're going to work in the field, you have everything you need. Well, anyway, this is one of them. I wanted to show you something that was in here that would be interesting for you. So there's two sections. One is uh, these FOI flashcards. So if I cruise on to that, you'll see that uh, there are, uh, the flashcard comes up, and then the what you have to memorize comes back. This risk management is kind of right here. So this is uh, defense mechanisms. So you say, what are they? So you got doctor, FDR, CPR. So that's the thing you remember, right? And so then you can go off of those. So it's kind of good for helping with that. That's one thing. Another thing, which I think is better even, one of my, the best, some of my best work is, uh, is here. So I took the FARs and I rewrote them. I took all the FARs that, that I say, FARs you must know up here. Uh, and I said, what's in it? How does it relate to airplane single engine land was my approach to it. Everything else I don't need to know anything about. So when I teach these, when I teach the FARs in a classroom, I never open, I don't open up the FARs and just go through them or have you read them or, or in the beginning because they, they won't make any sense to you. Because instead of it reading like this, it'll say uh, subpart C, C2I applies only if, you know, you are over, you know, say something. You're like, what's that mean? You go, like, oh, I don't have a balloon rating. I guess I don't need one. Or I have a balloon rating. I don't need one. So you're like, how does this help me with a student that I'm going to start teaching tomorrow? Right. Or what I need to know, like this regulation, 6131. This is you should tattoo this on your head. Gary Weaver has it. I know he has it. So you can put it in hand. It's OK. 6131 Delta two. It's how you solo somebody who has a pilot who already has a pilot. certificate. You don't use the stuff in the student pilot section because it's not they're not student pilots. It can't be held to that. So you can give them an endorsement to solo an airplane and then it's good uh, unlimited. There's no limit to it. It can be used forever. <clears throat> and uh, they can go from here to Billings, Montana tomorrow if they want to. And so there's a lot of things in here. So this is kind of a, these kind of things. So I basically say what these things are. And so I rewrote all the regulations so you can read them. And then what I have the student do is I say, now take this book, which you get is if you come to one of our classes or it's in CFI Essentials. And I say, then go to the actual regulation, like go to that regulation, 6131 at, in the evening and read that. And then what you'll see is you'll see that stuff come off the page to you. It won't be just gibberish anymore because you already know kind of what's in there. You kind of know what you're looking for. And that makes the regulations really, really a lot more palatable. 
So that's one thing. And there's other things in here too. This was set up for someone who's doing self-study on a CFI, maybe the whole, whole way, uh, or they're doing mostly self-study. So it was like, how can we provide something that would help them? So you'll see like problem areas on the CFI check ride. These are the problem areas we see a lot. And then flowcharts for various operations, to how to do certain things. And these FOI chapter summaries, and there's a lot of stuff in here, a ton of things in here. So anyway, there's that, that's one. The other is this one, which is, uh, it depends on if your, uh, your uh, examiner will let you use it, but as a study tool, this is another really good thing, because you have uh, an AC, AC61-65 hotel. It's, uh, it's basically uh, how to, what to endorse, right? So if you, want, if you have a private pilot, here's the available endorsements, student pilots, here, here, that, here they are. But uh, it's not, super operational. If you know kind of what you're doing, you can go to the FAR, then you can go to that. This thing is written uh, so that you can go right to what you want to do. And you can see every training requirement, everything all in, all in one spot. So let me show you what I mean by that. So it's, it's, like, a, it's like a deluxe version of 61-65 hotel. So say you want to do, I don't know, a student pilot. Let's see. Let's say something like this. These are the steps to solo a student, right? So it goes through what you need to do. <clears throat> and so you don't have to read the FAR and it's kind of convoluted. You find that the limitation for 25 nautical miles, you don't find that in student pilot limitations. You find it in the next section, which is the requirements to have cross country training completed. Uh, if you go more than uh, 25 nautical miles, that's where you find it. So this tells you what you need to do and then provides the endorsements that are required uh, on, on, for each thing. So all these kind of things. So you can go to any rating, say, I, I want to do something like a private pilot, airplane single engine land. That sounds like something I do a lot of. So what do I need to do? So then I go to that section and find it here. This is private pilot certification, right? And it will tell you, this is what you've got to do for eligibility. That's look with little tick boxes there and all that. And it gives you the ground training logs of what you have to have taught or they have to have done on the home study course. And it has the ground training logs around the flight side of things you have to do right, that you can print these, and then has the actual things you have to do, and then finally the required endorsements at the end. So this is a very helpful document to people who are training for CFI. And then there's another one, which I think is, of all these, if uh, people struggle the most with, uh, I think they struggle the most with, uh, with actual, uh, what they have to training. So what we teach at CFI Bootcamp is we say, for every example I'm going to give you, except for student pilots, what are the training requirements to do it? That's always located in the FARs then what are the uh, endorsements required to enable it? And then the third thing is what's gonna be tested on a practical test. Because sometimes if you're coming from a different category of class, you don't have to do everything, not the whole thing. So this thing, this is like, so how do you teach this stuff to you, to yourself? Like if your instructor doesn't know, which a lot of them don't, you say, I've got a glider pilot, you're likely to get something like that. I have a glider pilot, a private pilot level, and now they wanna go to, I still want a private pilot certificate, but they wanna do an airplane single engine land. So number one, how do I solo them? Because there's 10 hours of solo that's required and what endorsements uh, do I give and what's gonna be on the test? So um, fortunately, if you try to do crack that nut on your own, you may or may not get it right. And if your instructor doesn't know, you, know, you may not get it right. I don't know, but we'll get it right here because this is a book I wrote called Endorsement Scenarios. And this has 27 different endorse uh, scenarios. And one of that glider one is in here. So uh, there starts off with student pilots one-off activities, uh, adding categories of classes, student pilots. So I just cruise to anything, to give you an example of how rich this document is. Uh, you can look here. All right, so oh, it's, this is, <laughs> that's kind of like magic, right? It's like, a, I like lay it out, pick any card you want. And I just turn to the exact thing I was talking about. Determine the training requirements, endorsements, and procedures required for a pilot with a commercial pilot certificate, except for a commercial, with a glider rating to air, airplane and single engine land. So this would be your scenario. And then you try to work through that on your own. And if you don't get this, the solution in words are here. And then if that's still not enough, there's a flow chart. And the flow chart will guide you through all the regulations and tell you the regulations as you go how this is true, how that our, the solution that we came up with is true. So these things are really powerful because it gives you uh, a way to test your own knowledge. We also have something called airspace flashcards, which I can, it's for any pilot. And it's uh, this thing I'll show you. Cause these are kind of tools that are, I, I'll show you some FAA resources here too, but I figured this is, this is a good chance to show you these things and how, how really powerful they can be. <clears throat> when you have really good stuff that's been curated like that, and, and you think about how long it takes you to study or, or for your instructor, how much you're going to pay your instructor to, 
to teach you something that you can you can get by just a document. That's pretty good stuff there. Uh, let's see. I need to get it here. Standby here. It's under CFI Essentials, and it's. I guess I'll show you that. So I'll show you what this looks like, and then we can look at the Airspace flashcards. Here you go. Well, here. That's the wrong thing. All right, let me see if I can grab the share. Now. This was not, the window wasn't even all active, so I should be able to see it now. Hmm. Well, I have to show you the actual document. I was going to show you the CFI Essentials folder. Uh, well, I can't can share the desktop. That about work. <clears throat> Let's do that. <clears throat> desktop will work. So let's do that. So what you would see is not quite this. This is the for every CFI essential, but we haven't everything. Problematic. Okay, hopefully we can see the, <clears throat> the desktop now. Make sure. Yes, you can. Okay, good. All right. So then uh, you would open up. The, you would you would see this CFI essentials, and then you would see FA material, <clears throat> airplane information, our custom authored products, and uh, syllabus. So if I go to our stuff here, and I go down to airspace flashcards, like here, you can see all these things we created. <clears throat> Lesson plans are in here, by the way. And you open this thing up, then this gives you or your student a chance to like say, I'm studying the airspace, but how do you know if you got it right? What if you studied it wrong? What if you say, I think I'll just try to identify all the airspace that's on this chart. And what if you get it wrong? So that's not good, right? So this thing is a flashcard set. So basically it goes like this. Uh, there's a identifying airspace chapter to it. And so it's a big black X or arrow that's gonna be on, on this. And it will ask you a question at the bottom of it. So what kind of special use airspace is located here? And then the next page will tell you, and it will also tell you an explanation as well. It will give you the answer, and it will tell you that it's for class B, class it's all the CIFRA, the, the uh, terses in the country, everything. And then the second part of this book is uh, the requirements to enter. So these are requirements. So then it would have that section of the book, and it will say something like, Here's an arrow again, and it says, can you get special VFR in this airspace? Yes, it's class E. <clears throat> and it gives you the regulation and also a description of it. So these kind of things are ways that we can give our students and ourselves so we're not teaching ourselves the wrong things and practicing the wrong things. And the other thing I wanted to lastly show you then is, uh, is, Let me see. I guess I'll show you the, um, I guess that's, really, I'll go back to the outline because I think that's, we should stick on that for a little bit and make sure we've cover, covered absolutely everything. <clears throat> so we'll do that. All right, move the zoom controls out the way. Okay, this is this one. All right, finally. All right, so I think we covered uh, the main things around the outline. Let me uh, go through a few housekeeping things here at the bottom. And again, we'll open it up here in a little bit uh, <clears throat> to, to have you, uh, if you have questions or something you want to ask. <clears throat> um, this is not in CFI Essentials. Teach Free Flights, basically the documents built after you become a flight instructor. And if, in particular, if you're working from a 141 syllabus or a regular syllabus and you want to have a structured way to, to use, you, this what you can use with any syllabus. So it has the teaches the lesson plans that you would have with CFI Essentials. And brief are the whiteboard briefings that you would give if someone already attended like a ground school and just needs a briefing on what you're going to do. And the third is... Uh, 
what you say in the airplane during each maneuver, kind of fine, fine tuning that, that's what that is. So that's how, there's a companion guide for a student to that too. So the student can have their companion guide, tells them what to read and what to prepare for, for the test. So you can do that. Then power hours, we're gonna say, we're gonna go through how to teach any maneuver. And this is a particular technique that we'll dwell on. Uh, and I say, this gets consistent results. Uh, so uh, you probably already, you know some of it, but I mean, I'm gonna give you some, pretty much a, how you should structure a lesson and how you should, how you should teach it and how, so when you get to the airplane and you come back, that you'll have a really good chance of being as successful as you can. Now, of course, if you're teaching landings for the first time, you're not going to have, a, you're not going to be able, they're not going to be able to land. <laughs> but uh, with using this technique, uh, they'll learn to land quicker. I can tell you that. And then on the 23rd, we're going to look at the 61, it should say dash 65 hotel. This is the endorsements AC. And this is one that uh, in CFI bootcamp we use all the time because it's our core document. It goes along with our the one we the ultimate guide to endorsement. This is the FA, and so by the time you're done with our course, you've gone through everything that's in there, and be able to use it like a like a pro. So we're going to show you how to do that, like we teach our other students. Um, some people have asked, how do I see previous power hours? There's uh, two ways to do it. Uh, if you want to see a subset of them, like ten or so of them, you can get just join the Bootcamp Plus free site, <clears throat> and you get all this stuff. It's free to you, and there's a certain number of power hours in there. Uh, if you join it at, instead of 22 with power, it's nine bucks. If you do that, then everything's in there, including all the powers. We're inching up on 100 real soon. There's 90 plus. I, I thought we had more than we did, but we're inching up. It's going to be in uh, in about a month. We're going to hit 100. So there's that, just so you know. And then there's uh, these are the classes. Just if you're thinking about this, these are the classes we have left for the uh, for the year and where they're at. Uh, there's a December class, uh, which we'll post here, I guess, next month. But anyway, this. Next one is in Palo Alto. It's uh, our, it's in Opalaca. It's too, too close. That's coming on Monday. And then we have our, uh, up in uh, Palo Alto, it's pretty much uh, full. Uh, there's all, there's like one seat left. I think there's one seat left there. And I, IFR classes. And then we added these, these, which I think are kind of interesting, flying high performance multi-engine airplanes. So if you're thinking about transitioning into something like a Cirrus or something like an Aero or a 182 or a Turbo something or other, or a multi-engine airplane, uh, this would be for you. And this one's done. So uh, we will do the 13th of, uh, of August. We have virtual, those are virtual and we'll also have it in person at Palo Alto. So there'll be that because I'll be there in the Bay Area next next month for that. Okay, so that's kind of what's going on with that. Let's, let me look. Uh, no, we don't make any bound books. And I'll, t I'll tell you, uh, <clears throat> let me just go through the chats here where we have some, some minutes. Uh, the reason for it is because uh, it's just too expensive. We, the, the volume of stuff that we print isn't high enough to, 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 to get a good price. Like if you look at ASA stuff, like the pilot's handbook of aeronautical knowledge, you can buy that book for $30. If I had the same thing and I try to get it printed, it'll be like two, $300, right? If I have to print like 50 copies, it might be 200. It's gonna be in the $100, $100 plus range. So all of our, the teach free fly will cost, it, 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 well, it depends on where you, there's one, we did find a cheap printing place. It takes a little bit to do it, but I think teach free fly would have cost about $50 to print or $45 to print. But it's really nice having them printed. I do have to say a lot, they work really well. So it does, uh, it does add a bit of cost. If you can poke around and try to find a place that does it, uh, I, we did at one time have that. So, um, so let me go through some of these things. Okay, so Nick said, I'll also attach the PTS quick reference guide to the email. So in the chat, uh, Nick put up the, uh, put that, that document I was working on, which is the check ride study, the study guide, PTS study guide quick reference guide. Uh, okay, and then for uh, Wendy, so let's see, you didn't get the uh, syllabus. So what I need to do is, uh, what I need to do is try to, I'll, I'll put that in. If you stay on for the after show, if you can, I'm just gonna put it in the save chat. Uh, yeah, because that would be something to do. I'll, I'll do it here. <clears throat> the pilot guide is out. You, you should have got a copy already in the on, online. It was, uh, had a little, error in it, but in nothing significant. It's the same thing. Uh, if you, so if you didn't have that, I can put a copy of that in there at the end. Uh, and teach me, yeah, teach me. So would the flow chart cover any rusty pilot for a signal that hasn't flown in? I don't know, what would the flow chart cover? The it's flow charts, these flow charts are built uh, for endorsing. So if you have a situation where you, you have a, you will say, how do I solo a student? And you'd have a flow chart for that. <clears throat> how do I send them an airport? more than 25 nautical miles or within 25 nautical miles outside of that? How do I, 
uh, take a person from, uh, so I, w- I would think that which, so those scenarios would cover 27 of those scenarios. There's not 27 flow charts, it's probably like 15, but <clears throat> because some of the, the flow chart covers more than one scenario. So uh, I think that would, but for as a pilot, I don't think those will help you. As an instructor, yeah, but I don't think as a pilot, the endorsements really help you do anything. Uh, okay, so let's, uh, let me um, go do that. Let me close out for a second and then I'm gonna keep the chat open. And then for those of you who want uh, that syllabus, private pilot syllabus, and uh, want the pilot's dive book, I'll put them back in, the, uh, in there, assuming I can find them quickly enough. But I'll be able to do that within a half hour. So anyway, I hope that was all good for you. I mean, that if, especially if you're studying for your CFI, I know there was some stuff in there that was, uh, that was good. So I'll uh, get set up here, <clears throat> and then we'll close out today, and we'll, we'll get set up for uh, the after party. <laughs> after party. That's kind of funny, right? And uh, that'll be it. So uh, I guess I will talk to you next week for those of you who are coming back. And uh, I'll be here from Miami Beach uh, next week as well. So see you next week and stick around if you want some of that other stuff.